He who sees me, the self, everywhere, and sees everything in me, the self, he never gets separated from the self or me. Nor do I get separated from him. This is what Krishna says in Chapter 6, Shloka 30 of Bhagavad Gita. This shloka is very clear, but the problem arises when we don't know what is self. Most of the people on this earth, they only know themselves as this body-mind. The one who is thinking, acting, reacting, working, happy, unhappy, all this entity. Some people have confusion about self. They always think when they are resting, then they are in self. Or when they are working, or talking to someone, then they are out of self. It is completely untrue. First thing I want to tell you is, you have to find that self within you. Then only you can make any distinction. Before that, only thing you need is faith and practice and efforts, which leads to grace of that self to show the self. Self is not a thing which you can grasp by your mind or by your intellect. Self is that which is before mind. It is like sun, which is hidden by your finger nail because it is in front. And this perception that I am this body-mind is hiding the fact all the time from all of us. To know the self, you have to move back. From this ego self. Let me try to explain what is this ego self. We talk about soul. In Hindi we call jiva. 
Jiva is an illusion, but that illusion can continue for ages. Even death, even when you leave the body, Jiva still is attached to you. This is the problem. That ego is still functioning even without body. At night when we dream, ego is still persist. Though this gross body is not there, but still it persists. So you can understand how deep it is in, within us. To detach from that You have to stop using it. Everyone with ego is dependent on this word. Everyone. And anyone who is egoless is independent of this word. So the day when you feel within you that you are independent, and you are fearless, then you are free. That is freedom. Swadhin and Paradhin. Swadhin means you are independent. You are only dependent on the pure self. But you are pure self. So there is no dependence here. You are, you are, whatever it is. Rest, everyone is dependent on worldly people or things or situations or we always look and make connections with people in this world because we need something from everyone. Or there is a fear if I don't have this connection then when I need someone who will help me. This is our dependence. This is only there when there is ego. Ego is like this sensory organ which has tentacles in form of sensory organs and moves around and tries to find things, makes them pray, connection for its own fulfillment, for own individuality. It is also having a consciousness, but its consciousness is colored by its own selfishness. Selfishness to make this body survive and flourish. Though this body is there only for a very short while, but that doesn't mean anything to ego. Because ego thinks I am this body. This is a protective mechanism to keep that individual safe. But how long? One day the body will disappear. That ego will leave the body one day. But then we'll get another body. Because it has so much of attachment for body. Absolute is full of compassion. It gives another body. But it gives body according to your karma, according to the way you have behaved. Animal body, plant body, human body, disabled body, abled body, whatever it might be. How to be independent of this body? or how to abide in self, it is the same. You have to give up your behavior, how you pretend in front of others. If we put a secret camera and watch any person, as soon as you enter into a company, you become like that. 
we try to please that company those people that atmosphere that situation if you are doing very superficially and abiding in self that is okay but that is not there we leave that beingness and we jump into that atmosphere just to please just to be part of the company we try to impress people the one in us who always want to impress others is the devil in us is that individuality which also takes away the peace that is why when you come back from a big party you feel ah, at least i am back home actually we are back home here also we are so much external what people are talking and this is the reason why so many people on path of spirituality they start loving their own company they can't find solace in any company for any reason if they are still enjoying all that craziness and stupidity they have no clue about pure self probably they are faking in satsangs and they are more genuine in these companies this acting at ego level starts dropping off the moment you start touching your beingness that atman that pure then you stop giving energy to your personality to individuality that is what people know you by like people know how you behave in a certain situation some people become so so much acting on their impulses that everyone knows how this person will behave in a particular situation your cards are now open once i went to a theater with one of my friends who always used to give lot of exclamation when he he goes somewhere he said oh what an excellent what a place i have been sanjay took me to the best place and what happened few of my friends in college days they didn't go they had some other program but they all discussed before we went to see them after that play that how this person will behave when he'll see them and they were acting or enacting or whatever and as soon as we entered they asked him this question how was the play and as soon as he started telling about the play the typical way he used to everyone was laughing and we had no clue they said we already guessed how he will behave in this situation when he comes back what he will say this is individuality we become so much habitual to our habits that is why people say that this person doesn't like this thing so don't do this you know or do don't do this employer or your boss or even a family member we are slave of our habits and people around us start behaving in a way as they know us well they might know us well but we don't know ourselves this is the problem we know ourselves only as that wave at the top of ocean which keeps changing which is completely dependent on external things people situation
that pure energy in us is independent of all what is happening around us. It has no motive. It has no personality. It is just it is. <clears throat> ego knows more than that. Ego knows everything. Ego can plan. Ego knows future. Ego knows past. Ego even colors our past. Sometimes when we are talking about our past, we use so much of lies. We put so much of masala ingredients into it to make it <laughs> exciting. If we had a tragedy, we make tragedy look so big. And if we have achievement, we make achievement so big. You will not believe any person, one of the persons I know who got Order of Australia medal. I know him, he belongs to a very good family. And in all the newspapers in Australia, it was that he used to sell flowers in the front of temple. He used to read in, on a, under a lamppost. So when we want to say something, we become too extreme about things. We are not scared of lying and saying all these crazy things. And people, because this all sell, sell to impress. Ego wants to sell itself. It is on sale. Ego is the worst prostitute. It sells this body to everyone and anyone and all the time, only impressing others. The moment we become a spiritual seeker, we start impressing the God within. The only thing we care is that God within, the divinity within. And to impress that, we have no connection left with anything outside, external. All our energy is here, all the time. To an extent that sometimes we look like disheveled or we don't know what we are doing, sometimes lost. Sometimes we don't look that smart at all. You see, some of the jnanis, they look really like mad. Some of them can't take care of their body at all. But then the help comes to their doorstep. As I love one of the shlokas in Bhagavad Gita, what Krishna said, you pay attention to me, you become my devotee, I will take care of all your worries, all your problems, all your needs. I will take care. He, did, he didn't say, I will give it to some secondary person, second party to take care of you. I will send few people. He said, I will take care. You just pay attention, be a devotee of me. Who is this Krishna? Is he a person? Is he an idol? Is he the person who was born in Dwarka? No, he is that self within us in all of us. He has taken guarantee. You become devotee of that and I will take care of you. You don't worry. But we don't have faith. We keep one leg into the spiritual seeking and other as ego because we still want to sort out things around us. We can't trust even God. Though he said, but we, we, we don't want to take risk. And this attitude, we don't want to take risk, keeps us into ego mode. Because surrender is complete, it is not half. There is no surrender which is half surrender. If we want to be free, we have to give up a dependence on the external world. And we have to surrender to that energy in our heart. And in no time that energy will just manifest. It is always waiting to manifest. It only needs our attention.
and the moment we know the truth we become independent then how this life tree moves who cares who plans who takes credit i need to tell a very important thing because i get so many emails about people's personal problems relationship issues financial issues people don't understand they are asking wrong thing to a wrong person i don't know even about my personal or financial things how can i help others you should meet a financial planner or go to a marriage counselor they are wasting their time and my time and this is the problem why in spirituality there is so much of fraud happens because these people make those so called gurus become fraud because then they start telling about something or the other because people are coming and there are millions of people who want something out of this world rather than the god within they are lost but then the guru gets lost i have yet to see one enlightened soul who is giving life coaching to people nowadays all these spiritual people are life coach they are more worldly than a worldly person what life what coaching coaching only comes from ego understand this truth autobiographies of yogis comes only from ego otherwise who will write for whom who am i who is giving importance to this life of the body who when you know that you are nothing then how can you lift a pen and write about the story of this body mind it is useless I only want to say that spend time in solitude doing nothing and staying with nothing when we are on our own not doing any bodily activities not paying attention to any thoughts in our mind <clears throat> there is a body next to us there is a mind next to us intellect next to us go further deep deep enough where you have no association with any of these things eyes open eyes closed doesn't matter but give away your dependence on these things at least for few seconds be with your own self be with your own self don't move don't plan just be
don't even think about ego and self and any concept just be if you can get up early morning which we call as a amrit bela or brahm murat an hour or two before sunrise that time is so nice maybe spend some time with your own self listen to it in your silence slowly you will start feeling peace in your own company then all external talks about when you meet people is like a bad noise irritating addiction to self is so much so that people don't want to leave home don't want to talk anyone don't want to reply respond they don't want to convince anyone they want to lose all arguments because they have touched their own bliss bliss of self and secondly there is no ego to project outwardly or it is so thinned out now and i'll tell you it is a process it takes time don't be in a rush but understand the mechanism truth behind it how it works why it works how to contemplate on self what is self what is this word where are you what do you want to do what you want to achieve how do you see yourself staying in solitude in silence you get clarity in that clarity you see how this ego unfolds the moment we wake up in morning how it starts behaving in a very crazy manner and it gets support by its sensory organs by the world around by the people by gadgets by situations by thoughts i'll tell you this whole world this maya is in support of illusion and only one who is in your support is krishna in your heart and that krishna is none other than you know this truth go so deep that what bhagavad gita says becomes your own word it is doable to all of by all of us otherwise why would krishna will waste time and dharm raman maharishi will waste time or anand mai ma or anyone you know there are thousands and thousands why would they say the same thing again and again
sit in your solitude and be with your this i amness which is unmoving which is a stillness which is bliss which is silence and it is you your true self as you recede you start noticing it you will feel energy in your heart around your chest you will feel vibration spandan sphurna and so many things which were bothering you i need to do this do this do that whatever the personality was trying to impose work on you will start fading away as a distant noise those thoughts might come and go but you are so still that you cannot move you become unmoving still things happen still for some things you need to be involved and things will involve you and now there is no liking or disliking there is some energy which makes you to do or not to do but nobody is deciding no person is there to decide it is very simple very subtle within us but i'll tell you the repercussions of this is huge enormous you will not believe as if someone got a big lottery and he could not understand what it means living your life in dream as dream and living your life as life reality not illusion it's a huge difference and the most surprising thing is in this illusion everyone is in illusion literate nobel laureates educated uneducated rich and poor and everyone everyone is in it please don't compare your notes with any worldly person otherwise you will be pulled again into it and don't get pulled by your previous energy of personality so many times you can stay in this beingness but as soon as you catch up with old friends or your relatives or close friends you get pulled into the same old energy some people also don't need any person their thoughts are enough to pull them thoughts about past thoughts about things though they are alone but they still have those thoughts of situations in the past i am telling you all these things because all this thing matters it's not like you close your eyes you keep your hands in gyan mudra and you will be into it you have to get rid of this package empty empty keep some time only for self every day even if it is 2 minutes when you are have no phone no gadgets no work no mind meet self without the body mind let body mind be there but meet self as self only don't keep your attention on tingling in your soul or some irritation in the body you know that's what happens when you start focusing somewhere else 
these illusory things ask your attention. Once you touch your beingness in your solitude, then be, then remember that, that energy and be with that energy as if now you are in dark. Now you are holding the hand of this self. Don't leave it in this dark. Now you know what it is. It has no attributes, but still you can identify it by that energy. Be with that. Now you step out. When you work, you speak. Speak from there, work from there, talk from there. And when you make joke or you behave like some people around you in the ego, keep your attention there only. Be there, don't leave it. It is like, you know, People in spaceship, when they go out into the space, they have this rope tied to them, to the spaceship. Because if, if that rope gets caught, they will be lost in the space. No one can reach them. That is what is happening right now. Our rope tied to the self is lost. And we are just roaming like headless chicken in this illusory word. Once by all your efforts, practice grace, you find that beautiful self within you. Give all importance to it. Don't give it away for a small party where you become lost. You go to parties, not everyone who is drunk is mad, but everyone looks mad to me there, you know. They're talking crazy, they talk stupid, they become cheaper and suddenly they become animals. That's why we call party animals. Understand this truth. Look for that beingness within you. Be with that all the time. And the company and the people or situations where you think it is very hard to stay there, leave that, those places. Avoid those places. It's only initial part where you have to avoid and leave. Once you get firmly established in self as self, then everywhere you can be. It can take months, it can take sometimes years to firmly establish in that. Rejoice in this newfound energy, it's a new birth. Take your baby steps in this new life. People talk about entertainment. Who wants entertainment in this body? Self? Once I had an email by one of the seekers. She told me how much she is trying hard. And she said, because I put so much of efforts, I need some entertainment. So every day at night I watch a movie or I go to some party or I... Whom is she giving this excuse? I don't know. This is the way the mind plays. That you have put efforts to know the self. Now let's have a party. You have done really hard work. You deserve some party now. One step forward, two step backward.
everyone's mind plays tricks. Keeps you in a form. If everyone slips out of the Maya, then how this world will function? And yes, this is another question I a lot of people ask me. That if I get enlightened and if everyone gets enlightened, how this world will work? They are so much worried about the Maya illusion in the world. How will this world will function if everyone gets enlightened? Rather than knowing themselves, mind can cast anything, create obstacles in form of thoughts. Another person told me that I am a man and man can suck up all sufferings and that is what my dad has told me. That is in our family tradition and I am not scared of anything. I can face everything. It was I, I and I and I. How can I make understand such a big I about that Atman? You cannot. And that much of ego, to puncture that ego, even a tragedy cannot do anything. Once we understand where the problem lies, then you can fix it. But if we don't know where the problem is and we are trying to find solutions in the external world, we cannot find. Solution is within us. Problem is within us. Once we understand problem, we know the solution. This method of self-attention is direct and simple and profound. What you need to be, you just be that right now. What is the problem? You are that pure self. Just be that. What is the problem? Then all those energies which tries to pull you out, just watch them. Just be watchful of those things. Whether they are coming at your mind in form of thoughts or situations or people or things, just watch them. If you get pulled, that's okay. Just watch. Your watchfulness, your witnessing will make you so strong that nothing can move you from yourself. Rest all the practices start somewhere and tries to tell you that you will reach from point A to point B. In Gyan Marga, you start where you have to end. Just be. What is the problem? Tell me. And then any energy which pulls you, if you are not interested, how can it pull you? If something is pulling you, that means you have some interest, otherwise nothing can pull you. Nothing can pull you. There is no one except you, in and out. Out what we see is only projection of our own mind whether good or bad. Be that self what Krishna is saying and that's all. And then let face whatever comes. Forbearance is the way to go. Sthit Pragya Stay there, stay firm, and don't move. Tell me what is going to happen. Maximum some will come and cut your neck, but that is not your neck, you are not the body, then nobody can even touch you. What will be lost? Nothing. Whatever can be lost is not you. 
what will you lose when you are nothing then what will be lost something but you are nothing so nothing can lose nothing then what are you scared of what is at stake nothing is at stake it is only mind game that i might lose this i might lose that and this might happen and this from where we are talking it's all foolishness we are not even there we were never there where were you before getting into this body and where all these people go after leaving this body one day i one of my friends father gave a speech and his son shared the speech and he said my father is such a such a good person you know look how beautifully he is saying and the speech was he was saying that do good actions in this world so when you die people remember you as good person now who wants to be called as good person leaving a legacy and do good work so people can say that you are good when you die who can understand that is it that important to see that people praise you after your death who wants praise self want praise or ego wants praise who wants to see respect in eyes of others self or ego it might sound very good in this world that is why i am putting you something very nice what usually people will say and the whole world will appreciate but i want you to listen from that supreme truth from that absolute does it matter whom are we trying to impress whenever any question arises in your life always see are you trying to impress god in your heart or are you trying to impress these people around you full of ego whom are you trying to impress and if the answer is to the god within then do that job but if it is to impress others then don't do it look you will still do it i know but i'm just telling you try to impress this god within you be the devotee of that god within you if people think you are mad let it be bhagwan was always against any projection any showing any good impression to people some of the people who were staying with him they started wearing those you know sadhu like clothes or whatever he will say why are you doing like this there is no need and he used to make joke of those people because external clothes or your appearances or anything doesn't matter do you think if you started wearing particular type of clothes the self will manifest quicker i don't think so only thing which bhagwan said which can help you is the food satvik food
give a company of that personality which is only accumulation of knowledge and concepts and conditioning in whichever society we have lived, our education, our family. It is nothing to do with your real self. And there is nothing wrong with that personality also. But don't behave as if you are that. That's all. Even if your eating habit stays the same or your clothing habit or whatever you like, it is not going to affect you when you recede from the ego self to pure self. And you work from there. You act from there. And here you don't have to behave. There is no behavior coming from it. You also don't know what would be the next thing. But you are at peace. You are in your bliss. And you have no agenda. And you have no planning after planning after planning. Still things will happen. And then there is no enemy. There is no hate. There is no group. There is nothing. And you cannot say that I am giving this to that. You cannot. There is no giver. There is no taker. And then your surrender is complete because now you know that some, some mystical power takes care of everything. I think only human beings don't understand this. Animals know, plants know, birds know. They don't have any income protection or insurance. We make our life foolproof. Be with your energy in your heart. Let thoughts come, but don't pay attention to any thoughts. Pay attention to your heart. These thoughts, how long will they last? One day, two days, one week, two weeks, one month, one year. Even after one year, if all the thoughts disappear, it's not a bad deal. Thoughts are coming because you act on them or you get scared of them or you love them. If you have nothing to them, they stop coming. They don't talk to self, they talk to ego only. They come for ego, the one who thinks I am this body-mind. You are beyond thoughts. If you stay there where you are beyond, then no thought touches you. Now you can pick up any practice what you think can help you. But I think the best practice is to just be. I always feel the self-attention is before self-inquiry. You pay attention to self. And when thoughts come and you get swayed in those thoughts, then you can apply self-inquiry that energy is here. I am this, and thoughts are not for me. I don't know for whom they are. But for a novice, Bhagwan has said, you can ask this question, for whom these thoughts are. Then the question comes, who am I? And then you say, who am I? And then look. But I am asking you, just be that pure self. And then if thoughts disturb you, then... You can ask that question. But if you establish yourself in self as self, nothing can touch you. One thing I would like to tell you is don't take this silence as something 
what you call it silence. When there's no one talking, we call this a silence. No, no, this silence is Brahman. This silence is absolute. This silence is beyond your God also. And this silence is you. And this silence is eternal. This silence is pure intelligence. This silence is source of everything. If I can say this silence is, is, is the thing, there is nothing apart from it. It is in everything. Everything manifests from it. Even between every thought there is a silence, that is the silence. We are missing it all the time. Because our attention is on the words in the, on the page, not on the blankness, the whiteness behind those words, alphabets. That is what that silence is. For a jnani, this page of life is always blank. And for a worldly person, it is always busy with activity. You are the self in all. You are the all-pervading self. When you are all-pervading self, then what is that ego? What is mind-body? What is your story? Everyone's story is your story. Or you have no story. It is like an actor on stage. Story of the drama is not that actor's story. Now we have a body to act as an actor, but we are not this actor. Contemplate this all the time within you. Go deeper with these thoughts. Keep contemplating on it. Soon you will realize it is very hard to even act like ego. All energy will be drawn in. Our body will be blessed by it. Our surrounding will be blessed by that energy. And it goes far and wide. Even this body doesn't know. It works in its own mysterious way. Without any intention, it will do something. As if the higher power has taken over and this body is only enjoying the bliss. And that middleman who was tormenting the mind has disappeared. So the mind has merged into this energy. There is no doer, no actor, no person.
when satsang ends don't look for next job or work or intention don't pick up any thought i know some people might be thinking it's more than half past 9 i have to do this this doership understand watch this doership it gives so much of importance to work people read whole bhagavad gita and i see them work alcoholic they say work is worship ego gets bigger and bigger and they cut bhagavad gita aside bhagwan teaching is so pure on first instance it says all actions are bondage finish of the story good work bad work helping others helping yourself helping family working not working all actions are bondage finish of the story be in that energy where you are not doing anything no doership it is not the work which is bondage it is your doership and doership comes at mind level at thought i have to do this i have to do that this is going when these thoughts you are not responding still the work happens in a way beautiful way in peace in calmness and so many works don't even happen because they were useless and then follow another dictum what bhagwan says if something has to happen through you you cannot stop and if something has not to happen through you whatever you decide it will not happen remember this write down somewhere when this doership comes and abide in yourself with folded hands i would say there are very good teachers in the world but something just clicked when i met bhagwan it is something unique each of his word is golden if you pick up even one mantra that's what people say also about bhagavad gita you you pick up one shloka you follow one shloka in your life you will be enlightened same is with bhagwan you just pick up his one saying and you've done with this sansara he is the purest form of non duality you don't have to read any upanishad veda nothing just that simple book who am i nanyar few pages that's all and practice it Thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you and i'm really thankful that there are so many people who are on this path of truth i'm sure bhagwan would be very happy <laughs> thank you